right, welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. We are here back again. CapitalGM.com is the website. Capitato General Manager is the YouTube channel. You know it because you're on it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe and like button. We're about to talk about the Atlanta Falcons off-season preview. Yes. 2019 hash- edition. Go ahead. 2019 <laughs> edition. Hashtag and brotherhood. Hmm? The Falcons, man. Hmm? We, we're in brotherhood over there, that's man. That's what it is. Rise what was, up. Yeah, yeah, that's we what rise it up, too. Oh, okay. You got to rise up also, man. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, was, y'all, was, y'all wasn't risen up in 2018. But well, we're going to talk about it, man. So before we <laughs> mm-hmm. get to the... Somebody's 20... out there playing duck hunt. <laughs> <laughs> before we get to the 2019 off-season preview, let's recap the 2018 season. The Atlanta Falcons, mm. first game of the season, mm. Philadelphia Eagles, you know, the red zone woes came up, even though they improved throughout the year, but it came up. The red is ugly head. The red is ugly head. Yeah. And, and Julio, a, where you at? Another thing, injuries. Yeah. That red is ugly head as well. Keanu O'Neal, out for the year. Deion Jones got hurt in that game also. So it was bad out the gates for the Falcons with the injuries. And then, you know, Grady Jarrett missed some games. You know, a lot of guys missed some games on that defense. What you guys thinking about the 2018 Falcons? I mean, you, you said it, man. Like, when I think about the Falcons, I just think about a Band-Aid. And I just, just put it right over the, yeah. the the word Falcon, Atlanta, right over the, the bird, everything. And, I mean, you, you can't sustain that many injuries and think you're going you're gonna to win games. And, you know, I mean, being in the NFC South, tough division, tough uh, conference. They didn't. They didn't really have a shot, man. I know, you know, Matt Ryan's offense kind of eh, said it took off a little bit, but defensively, it couldn't stop. Couldn't couldn't, couldn't stop a, a runny nose. Especially a third down, man. Yeah. Second worst third down percentage in the league. Mm. Um, the offense, the rankings were you know top ten pretty much across the board, but defensively is where the struggles were for the Falcons. As far as defense, you know that that, that they play that that cover three scheme, and and it's important to be strong through the middle of the defense. And they weren't. Yeah. You know what I mean? You mentioned Grady Jarrett, interior defensive line. That's yeah. your disruptor. That's your three technique. Yeah. Deion Jones is your sideline to sideline guy at the yeah. second yeah. level. Excellent in, in pass coverage. The Falcons have been awful. We're awful in terms of defending the running backs out of the backfield. Uh, and then, of course, your, your enforcer, yeah. Keanu O'Neal, the Matrix. I like to call him the Matrix because, you know, he's coming at you and in, 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 it's a blue pill, red pill situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's hitting you into another dimension. He wasn't out there. You know what I mean? You didn't necessarily get great play from Trufant. You know what I mean? You know, Robert Alford is no longer there. So it was it was a tough goal of it. It was a tough goal of it. There, was, there were a lot of uh, mitigating factors, and they weren't able to overcome them. And the offensive coordinator brought in Steve Sarkeesian from the college ranks. What you thought about that hire, Drew, at that time? And, and now Stark is gone. He's, he's not there anymore. And, and now we brought back Dirk Cutter, an old Bucks guy. You know, when y'all first brought in Sark, his whole thing was we're, we're going to continue to do what, what Kyle Shanahan was doing. We're not going to change anything for Matt Ryan. We're going to keep everything, you know, status quo. But that's a little bit hard to do when it's not your offense. And, and there's, there's something to be said about, you know, play calling in terms of the rhythm and uh, setting plays up for, for, for later in the game. And, and, you know, I don't know if Sark could do that. You know, coming in, and and obviously it didn't work out the first year. Second year, you know, you, you got better, but um, at the end of the day, he's no longer there, right? Yeah, man. You, you brought back in old Dirk Cutter, and, Dirk. And, and and this is a guy who, you know, for whatever reason, you know, I, I have my hate a little bit. He don't run the football. He he wants to run the football. We'll find out if he can with with which running back. It's not that Tevin Coleman, he's out of there? Yeah, Tevin, we'll see, you know, if he, he signs. Probably he's likely out of there. Um, mm-hmm. Money, contract situation, we got to get back Grady Jarrett. Um, he's a first priority. So, yeah, it's going to be Devontae Freeman. You got Edo Spit. And, you know, when we talk about the offseason preview, looking to, to add another running back, man, via draft. Before we get into to 2019 offseason for the Falcons, um, I wanted to touch on something Drew brought up in terms of play calling in terms of there being a rhythm and setting up plays. You know, you run something in the first half to set up something in the second half, that type of thing. And and, and not knowing whether or not Steve Sarkeesian was capable of that. In order to maintain a certain level of continuity, it's a word that you've used and the Falcons have used, they brought back Dirk Cutter. It'll be interesting, interesting to see if he can kind of kind of do some of that. You know what I mean? It's difficult doing that as a head coach. That That is reserved for a handful of guys. Andy Reid comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but but certainly, 
I think I think that can't be understated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, a lot of people, I'm not talking about Falcons fans in, 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 in per se, but a lot of people outside of Atlanta, I'm sure there are folks in Atlanta, the detractors, that don't think Matt Ryan's the guy. Mm. That don't think Matt Ryan can get them over the hump. I'm a huge nice. Matt Ryan fan. I'm a huge Matt Ryan fan. And the reason why, part of the reason why I like Matt Ryan is because, you know, whether it be at the collegiate level or in the NFL, he's always done a little bit more than okay. you, what you would expect. He raises the level of the players around him. You know, it's it, not all the time, don't get me wrong, not, not all the time, but but more often than not, and, and he's dealt with some adversity. He's 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 battle tested. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You you saw what happened when they had you know a, 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 a very fast flowing defense that could get the ball back. They were they, were, they had balance and, and the explosiveness that obviously Julio Jones brings to the table. You say he was an MVP. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So and I don't think that was a fluke. I don't think that was a mistake. I, I think I think you have a quarterback that's that's capable of getting you to the promised land, assuming assuming. You have the other areas of your team in place. There's some issues or some question marks along the offensive line as well. The interior, you know, so particularly in the yeah. interior. You know what I mean? So, you know, as we as we transition into the 2019 offseason, we talked about some of the free agents. Um, of course, Atlanta's moved on from Robert Alford, uh, Brian Poole in the secondary. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be out. That that's going to be a, an area of need. I know you have a, a defensive back in mind yeah. for Atlanta. You want to talk about him a little bit? Yeah, yeah. man. Right there, man. Georgia. DeAndre Baker. This is my cornerback one. Uh, I think he'll fit perfectly in the Falcons zone scheme. Uh, very instinctive ball skills. He's in the hip pocket. Man, He's a, a big improvement over Robert Alford. And he, he'll be better than Trufant also. So Hold on. You just you just going to fly right over your boy. Who's that? You just Oliver like he's... Oh, Isaiah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. That was the last, uh, the draft pick the, the previous year. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm just going to say it, man. Go ahead. Dan Quinn has gotten it wrong. I think it's the second time with, with uh, LSU. J Jalen Collins, yep. the corner. I know he had some other issues as well, but, you know, he didn't. he's not on the team anymore. And, and Isaiah Oliver, you know, I wasn't a big fan of him coming in. You know, he played okay, uh, but, you know, you, I you just need, don't trust him on, on the field. You need Oliver, though. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna need him to, gonna to need develop. Him. You're gonna need him to develop because yeah. like we mentioned a couple of defensive backs and aren't, aren't gonna be there. Well, but Alfred has already signed with the Cardinals. So mm -hmm. with Poole, I thought you know it, it's been it's been an interesting ride for Poole. You know, I mean, we had a chance to see him at the Shrine Game a few yeah. years back. He really showcased his ability. Undrafted free agent became the nickel. Yeah. Played really well a couple of seasons. In the last couple of seasons, he struggled. You know what I mean? So replacing that, who's gonna be your nickel moving yeah. forward? Do you move Trufant inside with That's Oliver? And your boy DeAndre Baker on the outside, or maybe even the Greedy Williams, you know, depending on how the draft falls. So exactly. it, it, you have some, some question marks in the secondary at the second level of the defense. You know, De De Devondre Campbell, you know, mm -hmm. is he part of the long term? Is he part of the long term solution? Outside of Deion Jones, are you comfortable with what you have at linebacker? Uh, I think I think some improvement also. We could we could look at the linebacker position. Uh Devondre Campbell, he, he fits the, the defense because you know, fast flowing. Sideline to sideline linebacker, you know, he had a, a rougher season last year than, than the previous years, but the entire defense didn't play good, man. And and so I think cornerback is the biggest need, but I, I want to see that the interior of the defense also get, get addressed this offseason. I know the big uh, thing is Grady Jarrett. He's coming back, man. I know you're going to ask me. Is he yeah, yeah he, I was going to ask you. Is he's, he, he'll be back. Is he coming back? And, you know, Atlanta's in a position where – you know, offensively, they're they're pretty they're, they're pretty ready to go into you know interior on the offensive line and, and, and that goes for the defense line as yeah, well. Definitely. You know, and they're in a position, in my opinion, that they could trade up, trade up and get the mm. guy that they want because you know they, they probably don't. If they're completely healthy, healthy last year, they probably you know are picking in the twenties. You know, some people might think they're picking in the thirties. You know, but um, but let, let's say they trade up from fourteen to to I don't know to to a top. Yeah, in, in top ten somewhere. Yeah, it all it all depends on the draft board who's mm -hmm. falling. Maybe maybe teams trade up for quarterbacks. You know, mm -hmm. quarterbacks usually fly off the board. Teams trade up, and and maybe a defender you know starts to fall down the uh, the draft board. I'm hearing maybe a, a Quentin Williams. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think he's a, one of the top two best players in the entire class. But Go ahead. funny funny things has happened. But you know, I, I like Ed Oliver, but you know he's more of a three technique. That's where Grady Jarrett is anyway. So. Yeah. But yeah, corner man. I'm looking at corner in that first round pick or or defensive tackle. Depends on which guy and a trade up. Yeah, possible, possible as well. Just to round out the defensive conversation, the defensive line. That's where it starts. Mm -hmm. Obviously, particularly when you when you talk about that free th 
four three over defense. Um, the cover three base. It's 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 generally a zone scheme. Mm -hmm. You got the two ends. You got Vic Beasley. A couple years ago, yeah. was really ascending, and and it's been a struggle over yeah. the last year and a half or so. Okay, um, yeah. There's a huge gotcha. cap number. Gotcha. Drew Drew was of the mindset that maybe I'll need to move on. I yeah. I don't know that that the Falcons can afford to do that. Yeah. I think it's no I think, dead money, by the way. I I just don't think they can with with some concerns about about Tack McKinley and his health. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So so it, it is it is a rich draft, mm -hmm. rich draft class in terms of in terms of pass rusher and, and, and defensive line talent in general, but when you already have a need in the interior and you have substantial need on the back end, can you afford to invest another first round pick on an edge rusher? Well let me let me let me let me paint a little bit a bit of a different picture. He's twelve point eight. Mm. No dead money if you if you cut him. He is a young younger player. Mm -hmm. But what if we take that twelve point eight, we, we put that back into the cap because we got a little cap room, and we go out and we get a we get we get us an edge defender out for agency. Mm. It's a lot of them too, but you gotta you gotta see who's gonna be the free. I think a lot of these guys are gonna be tagged. You know the Clownies, um, Demarcus Lawrence exactly. of the world. So. It would be those other uh, secondary ends that's free agents, like a Dante Fowler. Would, would you, are you, are you? Are you are you taking that? Are you taking you taking that? Or are you taking a Beasley? Man, Beasley, man. I just said he's a couple seasons removed from that what, fourteen and a half sacks, fifteen sacks. He he could get to the quarterback. He just hasn't done it consistently. Um, they he was playing out of position. That, yeah, they, that, that's yeah, that's what I was Yeah, they, they played him out of position. A lot of makers standing up. Uh, for a couple, you know, a couple weeks there, but he needs to be rushing the quarterback at all times. He, he he's not a tackler in space, no. and they're asking him to tackle in space no. far too often. They, they, because of his athleticism, yeah. they, they figured that he could, you know, stand up and, and drop into a, a, a hook zone or whatever, a curl zone, and get cute with him and do play games. But no, he's a pass rusher. That's yeah. that's what he is. You know what I mean? So allow him to do what he does best. Again, we've talked about it throughout this this entire video series in terms of these previews. Is put your players in a position to be successful. Focus on, on on their strengths as opposed to trying to, you know, necessarily play Legos. Of, of course, if you got guys with that kind of versatility, of course, you can deploy some of those games. But but generally speaking, particularly when you're talking about a young pass rusher, mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing about pass rusher as well. You, you mentioned free agency. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. But there may be folks out there saying, listen, th th I love the edge rushers in this class. I, we do too. It, it, it's, they're, they're, they're phenomenal. But who's to say that they're going to hit the ground running? You know what I mean? Yeah. This team isn't that far removed from, from competing for a championship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, when you look at the offensive side of the ball, there's going to be some changes. Tevin Coleman, for all intents and purposes, won't be there. Devontae Freeman tends to get nicked up. His running style, you know, Edo Smith showed well last year. I think that's a good pick. Heather, you have an idea. You yeah. have a thought process in the yeah. second round. I got you. High dream. Go ahead. David Montgomery, running back Iowa State, man. He's your running back what? My running back one. Okay, well, we getting him in the second. You know, running backs, they I fall know, down. Just, they don't, they don't, you know, devaluation of okay. the running back position. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I think David Montgomery, I think if he falls to the second round right there for the Atlanta Falcons with us potentially moving off in Tevin Coleman, Devontae Freeman, like you said, nicked up, you know, Smith there, and a guy like that that's, that's dynamic. Uh, you know, he, he has the vision. I mean, let's let's go vision. He has the vision, like we call yeah. it, CPGM term. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, he can help you in the passing game as well. So I, I like him also in the second round, man. Padre? No, I mean... That means, that means yeah. you know, if you if you go in that direction, then that probably means Devontae Freeman's last season in Atlanta is coming up here. Mm -hmm. In the 2019 it's, to 2020. It's, it's make or break, you know? man. Devontae Freeman was a, a great running back for the Falcons. And, you know... It, in the last couple seasons, we gotta see how he come back, man. Sure. That position—that's yeah. why they say it's devalued. Is yeah. it, it, it can be e easily replaced and replenished every couple seasons, man. The only other thing that that I'd like to talk about offensively, because I, I like what you have in terms of the the uh, perimeter weapons. You know, Calvin Ridley. You know, yeah. uh, there was a lot of you know people talking about his age and the fact that he wasn't you know the, the sparky. He can beat man-to-man -man coverage. That's what's that's what's most important. Of course, you have Julio Jones. Yeah. Um, this may be Mohamed Sanu's last year, but it's a quality receiver. Yeah. So you could go at that position. Austin Hooper broke yeah. out last year. Okay. That was really good to see. Um, the interior of that offensive line. Is there anyone at at pick fourteen you think is worthy 
of, of a big Cody Ford, perhaps. Cody is, Ford. Is, there, is there someone? It, just depending on how the let's say Greedy and Baker fly off the board for whatever, because yeah. corners, you know, that's a money position. Yeah. You know, foundational type of position. They end up, mm-hmm. you know, going higher than you anticipate. It is is an offensive guard uh, a possibility at fourteen? Yeah, man. Um, there's a lot of guys that's labeled as tackles in this draft class that probably gonna get pushed inside. Some people think Jonah Williams will be pushed inside. Cody Ford. Also, uh, Dal- Dalton Reisner from uh, Kansas State. Mm-hmm. So with that 14 pick, I-, I would rather go the other positions that we named earlier. But if we had to get a guy, I think it'd be the Reisners, the Cody Fords, move him to guard. So I think it is a possibility there as well. But I think the bigger needs is uh, corner, defensive tackle. That might even be a trade back option too. If you if you're if you're saying go offensive line, go inside interior, mm-hmm. and drop one of those tackles, but trade back to couple couple picks because y'all have like seven picks and they're all your picks. So. Yeah. So yeah. who's playing next to the Grady Jarrett? You, next you, to Grady you mentioned, you mentioned the interior that defensive line. Yeah. If, you, if you're looking at the uh, interior D tackle to play next to Grady Jarrett next season, um, look right there the Clemson boys, man. You know, uh, national championship guys, Dexter Lawrence. Uh, D tackle, he's more the run stuff for first and second down, mm-hmm. or or Christian Wilkins, man. You know he's a pass rusher. I know you know Grady Jarrett and him were like three techniques okay. built, but you know when you go into a pass rush and you want to get to the quarterback, you can put everyone out there. So and it will help the Falcons third down woes. So yeah, D tackle, man. So the Falcons, we, we mentioned a lot of different scenarios, man. They could go pretty much a lot of different yeah, places in this draft: win. trade up, trade down, stay there, and just get the best player available, man. You just gonna leave out Jeffrey Simmons, just sneak him in there. Hey, Jeffrey I mean, Simmons, it's not 2019, and we playing, but you know. Yeah, I, I think that first round pick I, that early, I, I wouldn't take a chance on a guy that that's not. Playing. No, I wouldn't. You know, yeah. third round. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, if he fall, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> we taking Jeffrey Simmons if he fall to the third round, man. A lot of wees, man. You, you know. <laughs> Rise up, man. There we have it, man. That's the Atlanta Falcons offseason preview 2019 edition. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think the biggest position need is for the Atlanta Falcons and what you would do in free agency. I know we you know, discussed a lot about Big Beasley, Devontae Campbell. You know, are we moving on from those guys as well? And what would you do with the 14 pick overall? in the